So that's what this show is going to deal with. It's going to deal with a really cool chemical change. You guys ready to see the first really cool chemical change? Yeah! Okay, excellent, very good. So, we're going to start off with this jug right here. This jug has a liquid inside of it. It's a mystery liquid. I'm not going to tell you what the liquid is, and your parents are really going to appreciate that in a minute when they see what this does, okay? So I'm going to put my hand on the top, and I'm going to shake this jug up just like this. And when I shake this up, the liquid evaporates into a gas, and that's just a physical change. It goes from a liquid to a gas, that's a physical change, that's no big deal. As a gas, it'll fill its container and spread all around. So it's spreading all around inside this container, moving, taking up any empty space that's there. And this gas is highly combustible, so we're going to light it on fire. All right, everybody? Okay, so I want you guys to watch carefully. We're going to dim the lights. Here we go. I want you to cross your fingers, everybody. Here we go. Watch carefully. See if we can get a really neat chemical change here. Very cool. That was pretty neat. Now, most of the time people will scream out, do it again, do it again. Yeah. Just like that every time. So watch carefully. Watch carefully. Is it going to work a second time? Let's see. We'll see. Here we go. Ready? Not really. It just stays right at the top, just like that. You guys see that? It's just staying right at the top there. It's not really moving down to the bottom. And there's a reason for that. We need three things for a fire. We need an ignition source. So you can use sticks, right, or a flint. We need a fuel, like a mystery liquid, or sticks, or newspaper, or uh, anything like that. Oil, very good. And we need one more thing. What's the other thing that we need? Oxygen. We burned up all the fresh air that was in here. So we don't have fresh air, fresh oxygen to get this fire going. So we do have a second jug that should have some fresh air in it. So we're going to try this one more time. This one has a nifty little handle. I'm going to try it one more time. We're going to shake, shake up the mystery liquid. We're going to get it to start to evaporate. It's going to spread all around the container. When it evaporates and spreads around the container, is that a chemical change or a physical change? It's a physical change, right? It's going from a liquid to a gas. When I light it on fire, we will have a chemical change, okay? So we're going to dim the lights one more time. And we'll watch carefully, everybody. Here we go. Cross your fingers. Very cool. I like that one a lot. All right, now, let's see. Let's try something that's different than this. We have, this was very slow, right? A very slow burn to the bottom. You guys can see something that's a lot faster than this? Something that's a lot faster than this. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to use these iron spheres that are here. We have two iron spheres, and they're pretty heavy. And as spheres, when I smash them together, they're going to meet in one tiny little spot. And when they smash together, because this one is covered with aluminum, we are going to get a chemical change. We have rusty iron spheres, iron spheres covered with iron oxide, which is a fancy word for rust, and we have some aluminum. And when we smash those two together, we're going to make a new substance. We are actually going to make plasma on the stage, like we talked about, that state of matter that we talked about. Now, this one takes a couple tries. So I want you to look very closely. We're going to dim the lights so you can see this. Look very closely at the spheres here, everybody. Anything yet? Okay, maybe that's not enough energy to get this reaction. Anything? We go. Let's get a real good one over here. We'll come over to this side so you guys can see. Watch carefully. Let's get a real good one. There we go. One more. There we go. Very good. All right. So what we were making there was plasma. All right. That is a totally new substance. So we're using a physical action to make a chemical change. All right, everybody. Now, we've come to our last experiment. This is my favorite experiment. Now, this experiment is going to use something very interesting that Miss Catherine is going to bring out. And I want you to watch carefully. Let's see if Miss Catherine has it. Whoa! You got to be careful with that one. All right. Now, what does Miss Catherine have, everybody? A balloon. A balloon. A right. Very good. Balloon. Excellent. It's an orange. It is an orange balloon. Use an adjective. 
<laughs> Very good. Now, all right. At the Museum of Discovery and Science, we like to end our shows with a big bang. Now, this balloon is floating. So what do we think might be inside of this balloon? A lot of people say helium, right? Because you use helium to make balloons float in the air. But there's not helium inside of this. What's inside of this balloon is a particular gas. It is number one on the periodic table. And it's tasteless and odorless, highly combustible, and it's the, the most abundant element in the universe. What is it? Hydrogen, very good. This balloon is filled with hydrogen gas. And we are going to introduce a flame to this hydrogen gas. We're going to get something very interesting to happen. Now, I need to change the table a little bit. We're going to turn this like this. So we want to make sure that everybody keeps the same amount of eyebrows that they came into the show with. We also have to get one more thing. For this, we need this gigantic blast shield. Yes, I am protecting you. By you, I mean the center section. I'm really sorry for the people who are on the sides. <laughs> this is going to be really interesting. Now, for the adults in the room, if you've ever seen old footage of the Hindenburg, we are going to make a mini Hindenburg on the stage. And for the young ones who have never heard of the Hindenburg, it's going to be really awesome. Okay? Now, I am not going to light this balloon on fire with this tiny grill lighter. If I do that, I will not have any arm hair at the end of the show. So we're going to use what's called the chicken stick. This is the chicken stick. And it's called the chicken stick because I'm going to be a chicken and I'm going to stand really far away from the balloon like this. This is my favorite chicken stick of all time because it doubles in size, just like that. Now, is everybody ready for this? Okay, excellent. Now, I want you to stick your fingers in your ears for this activity because we may get a little bit of a noise and we're definitely going to get a bright flash. Is everybody excited? Yeah. Okay, very good. We're going to dim the lights so we can really see this. I'm going to light the chicken stick. And we're all going to count together. Here we go. Count with me. One, two, three. between the two. Yeah. The first balloon just had helium, I mean hydrogen inside of it. Hydrogen inside of the balloon. This balloon has hydrogen inside of it, but it also has magnesium inside of it. Magnesium is used in fireworks for the 4th of July and for New Year's, and especially in sparklers that people like to use. So this is going to have a very interesting reaction. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay, let's dim the lights one more time. We'll get our chicken stick ready. We're going to dim the lights. Should we plug our ears? You should probably plug your ears. It is going to be just as loud as the last one. We're going to light our chicken stick. And everyone's going to count with me, right? Here we go. We're going to go backwards from three. Here we go. Three, two, one.